second in the speaker is the Professor Mohammed Mukhtar. He is a professor of physical chemistry, chemistry in the department, faculty of science, King Abdul Aziz, University of Geneva. His talk, cycling is the copper, open, layer, the double hydroxide, supported carbon nanotubes, and graphene oxide as enhancing catalyst for carbon carbon coupling through output and Altman reactions. First of all, I would like to thank the chairman for the kind introduction as well as the organizing committee for inviting me for today to present the talk about the uh, cover cobalt layer of hydroxide. Cover cobalt layer of double hydroxide, carbon nanotubes, and graphene oxide as enhancing catalyst for carbon carbon carbon. I make, I make short for the title as it's uh, going to be the all my reaction as well as other condensation one but let us start first with the um, applications in general in the carbon 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 one uh, first of all i'd like to thank to let me go 28 years before when i was pre master student here at, King, at uh, Cairo university and between these 28 years they are divided 14 years at the national research center another 14 years at the King Abdullah University. Uh, so it's quite a long journey since I started here. To, it's nice to meet you here and to have a talk today about my uh, research during this long time period. So first of all, I would like to talk in, during my topic for the CC coupling itself. Uh, I have to define a little bit about the CC coupling or carbon or carbon, carbon coupling. Then we'll go through the different catalysts usually used for these kind of reactions, which are usually the beryllium metals, beryllium complexes, and what uh, could be another solution instead of using this classical beryllium catalyst was a group X, why we are going to study the layer double hydroxide materials instead of the other well-known beryllium one. Then what's the solution for improving the properties of the layer double hydroxide itself which is need of course more improvements for the applications in industry what, what would be the possible solution either by supporting the 2d which is two-dimensional material to another two-dimensional material like graphene oxide for improving the dispersion one then during the talk i will more specifically study the cobalt copper layer double hydroxide graphene oxide hybrid more specific to all my reaction and we'll go to the conclusions and outlook of my lecture so first what is the coupling reactions in general they are organic chemistry catch all terms of a variety of reactions where two hydrocarbon fragments are coupled with the aid of metal catalyst with the formation of new carbon carbon bond in the product they are classified into two kinds of coupling, either cross-coupling reactions with the involved interactions between two different uh, partners, or homocoupling where we couple two identical partners. According to this achievement, we could recognize in 2010 the Nobel Prize holders for the carbon-carbon coupling, we starting from the Nobel metals, but they end by the Nobel Prize. Um, uh, Arika Suzuki from Hokkaido University by his pioneer work for the what's called Suzuki-Tabling reactions, which is a reaction between organoboron species and uh, uh, alkyl halides catalyzed by beryllium catalyst in bracelets over the years. Um, and uh, Negishi, who from Bordeaux University, the States, making coupling using the organozyme compounds and organic halides, again using beryllium coordinated catalysts, embraces of bases in order to form the bi-aryl compounds. And last, the uh, HEC reactions, Richard Heck from the University of Delaware, USA, already uh, used 
answer to read the lights, or treated with alkenes in order to form in braces or palladium in a braces of these, to follow the form of uh, by iron uh, substitute. So, uh, more specifically today, I will choose another reaction which is almost 100 years old by Ullmann. Uh, Fritz Ullmann was a German chemist. Ullmann was born in Fert, so it's very close to very, very long <laughs> And got his PhD from uh, Geneva University. His pioneer work on formation of the white rye using uh, copper salt, <coughs> uh, copper blue helium salts for the formation of the rights, but the only uh, problems of this reaction, it couldn't find industrial applications uh, due to the conditions of the reaction itself, using liquid freezer reactions, using homogeneous catalysis, which I will talk a little bit about the drawbacks of this one, the temperature, a little bit between 120 to 300 degrees centigrade, they should use copper powder, or copper one salt, or copper one siphene to carboxylate. However, this reaction is very important for the formation, for the senses of monomers that are used in the senses of conductive polymers, as well as in the pharmaceutical applications and agrochemical. For that reason, uh, more research has been done in order to improve the process itself using different catalysts for the preparation of the byproducts. <coughs> Again, uh, we, we have to compare between the homogeneous versus heterogeneous catalysis in, uh, for the organic synthesis materials. Usually, organic people using liquid phase reactions in the classical uh, models, using solvents during the reaction, using catalyst almost bases, which are liquid bases at the end of the story. And the difficulty of this process is undesirable chemical wastes are produced. They need to make neutralization to the bases they are used because they couldn't separate these bases from the solution. So they have to add acids at the end of the story to make neutralization for the bases, which couldn't be separated from the solution. Also, the catalyst itself couldn't be reused again, which is also one of the important applications for the operations in the dust. And contrary to that, the hydrogen catalysis provides a better solution <coughs> By the easy separation of the catalyst itself, uh, the reuse of the of the catalyst many times, and the robust of the process itself. <coughs> uh, we can minimize the wastes caused by the salts in the, in the homogeneous catalysis, as as I explained later, uh, before. That we, can, we don't need to use a material that could be disappearing in such a solution, need to be neutralized. So minimizing the waste during the reaction and could be utilized under variable alternative conditions. That's to say there is no need to make only classical methods for using the traditional scatters, but you can use ultrasonic radiation, uh, uh, microwave radiations in a set reaction system. Here in the next slide, I would like to make a literature survey. Um, Literature survey for the using of mostly using the catalyst in the literature in the Ulmer reaction for the heterogeneous catalysts. Uh, we could find that the palladium based catalysts still have almost 99% uh, yield, but the conditions are 10 hours working, 100 degrees centigrade water as a solvent, embraces of a base again. So they should introduce a base during this reaction. Uh, potassium fluoride bases at 130 degrees, 20 hours, uh, should be embraces of the cover, silica supported cover catalysts, embraces of such kind of bases under these conditions, in order to attain almost 85% uh, yield. Uh, so chemical is using cover catalysts, they achieve around 85 uh, percent yield, but the conditions 100 degree for five hours. While cobalt itself, we have only in the literature the cobalt chloride, which is again a salt, uh, uh, using uh, bromobenzene instead of aridobenzene as a starting reaction a reactant. In presence of manganese dust reducing agents, gradient reagents and atmospheric oxygen, 
So if we compare between all of these heterogeneous catalysts, although they solve one of the problem, which is we have heterogeneous catalysts instead of the homogeneous one, could be separated, could be used, but still we have some limitations and applications as the next slide will explain. As for example, palladium is beautiful, yes, but palladium itself is expensive. Second one is uh, sensitive and requires additional reducing agent during the reaction. So it's not only working alone, needs a reducing agent, needs it requires a base in most of the coupling reactions, and the problem of palladium leaching during the reaction, especially for the liquid phase reactions, I'm not talking about the gas phase applications. More advantage for the retrogenous one, we could also possible to use such kind of reactions in the gas phase, and we can avoid the problems for facing the liquid phase reactions. But just once you are using the liquid phase reactions, you will face some problem of the palladium leaching, and this means you have some problem, some palladium all the products themselves is you and separate and you face it. So you don't have pure material. Again, cover one salts powder needs a base in a temperature range of 100 to 100 reaction time. And this is relatively high as we as, as we explain. It needs again more assistance during the reaction. Cobalt chloride will return back to the homogeneous problems and the, the separation and the reuse and so on. So what could be a possible solution? or how to think for find a catalyst that doesn't need an assistant by another base during the process, as well as to increase the stability, the durability, find different, by uh, working under different conditions, different techniques. So the idea came by studying the solid base catalysts. In general, some solid base catalysts. So we can have solid base catalysts instead of using the uh, ordinary uh, liquid bases or the other one. Therefore, we have to make a comparison between the solid base catalysts in comparison to the other uh, bases. First of all, the neutralization of the reaction mixture is not required. As in the liquid phase alkalis, we have to neutralize at the end of the reaction with the acids. We don't need to do that in case of the uh, solid base catalyst because it's easily separated by filtration, washing, and reuse again. Second one, the high temperature reaction is possible. It's not limited. We are not limited here because we are not related to the boiling point of the organic uh, solvents. We are most related to the reaction to the catalyst itself and stability at the temperature. Uh, employment of the flow reactor, as I explained, will be possible. Flow reactor means we could convert the liquid material into gas in the gas phase. So we have the reactor, whatever the kind of the reactor, fixed bit or whatever. So we can pass the gases over the catalyst and make a reaction in the gas phase. <coughs> Use of the base tolerant material is not required. The material itself is base, so we don't need to add extra base to the material, but we have to control the basic sites to avoid any problems that cause caused by the uh, removal of the basic sites or changing the process, the, the change of the nature of the catalyst during the process itself. Uh, also, one interesting thing, which is a bifunctional, dual functional catalysis that's possible in case of only solid base catalysts. For example, in the red rubber side, which I will explain later during this uh, talk, We'll find, although it's a basic solid material, but we prove that there are some acidic sites due to the presence of aluminium trivalent and such material. So we have one basic site, which is important for a certain reaction, and some acid sites in the catalyst itself. And some reactions need the presence of both of them. You need an acid, you need a base, and they are found in the structure of the catalyst. This means there's also another advantage for the solid base uh, catalyst rather than the other one. <clears throat> and there are also some reactions very specific to the solid base catalysis have never been done earlier by the liquid, which is heterolytic, uh, heterolytic uh, <clears throat> splitting of hydrogen into proton and hydride, which is, has not been observed before for the liquid basis. <clears throat> so again, for summary for the types of solid base catalysts and how the percentage of both of them in the literature, we could find we have many 
kind of solid based catalyst. First, the single component, metal oxides like magnesium oxide, calcium oxide. And we have the double component, metal oxides like zinc oxide, alumina, magnesium, titanium. Um, they represent around, around 30% of the applications. 20% are uh, tend to the alkali ion exchanging zeolites like sodium x zeolite, cesium x zeolites. We have also some alkali metal supported metal oxides like sodium supported alumina. And most of the, of the catalysts that are used in this area are related to the layered double hydroxide materials like hydrotalcite, terizolite, and uh, sibulite materials. Today, again, we'll select the hydrotalcite, which is called uh, layered double hydroxide, magnesium, aluminium, layered double hydroxide material for its applications in its own direction. So, layered double hydroxide. What is this material? Uh, and layer double hydroxide originally came in from the brucite structure of the magnesium hydroxide itself, where the divalent cation is present as of site, and the hydroxyl grooves are in this form. So if you substitute the divalent cation, which is magnesium, more specifically the hydroxyl site and magnesium, by aluminum, this means you will add Trivalent cation in the cationic sheet of the material. You have the hydroxyl groups. Accordingly, you added more positive charges to the cationic sheet. And for these positive charges, you make neutralization. You need to neutralize this one by the intercalated anions. So, anions, according to the method of preparation, you could add nitrates, sulfates, chlorides, carbonates, whatever. Or even you could add polymer as intercalation processes and so on. So now we have some kind of interactions due to hydroxyl groups of the cationic sheets interacting with the water molecules by hydrogen bonds here, and we are building a layer by layer, cationic layer, anions gallery, cationic layers, and so on. This material find their applications in uh, catalysis, catalyst supports drug delivery, because this is environmentally benign. Um, I could give an example, which is, for example, if you have some extra acidity in your stomach, you need uh, a drug called magnesium milk. Magnesium milk, simply, this is magnesium layer of hydroxide material. It's just to neutralize the extra acidity by scavenging the acids in the inner layer of the material. So it's environmentally benign as well. It's not a toxic material, so it could be used for drug delivery. And waste removal, and most of its application in waste removal, is not only for the normal applications, but also in the nuclear stations, nuclear power stations. <clears throat> and their unique and uh, import, importance uh, drivers from the annuanic exchange here, as well as the distribution of the cations in the octahedral and tetrahedral sites as well. I will explain later for the such kind of distribution here. <clears throat> Again, this is in general the formula where the divalent cation and trivalent cation are present in a certain ratio uh, in the place of hydroxyl groups and here the intercalated anions, which is could be carbonate, sulfate, uh, fluoride, chloride, whatever. And the trivalent, of course, could be gallium, extra, divalent. It's possible to introduce instead of magnesium any other transition elements. And here we could find different scenarios for the distribution of the cations in the cationic sheet and this could control at the end of the story the catalytic activity of the material specifically if you use it in a certain catalytic reaction. So can we move the divalent cation by cobalt, by cover, whatever, nickel, and the trivalent cation also by any other trivalent one and you can have a huge number of possible layer materials or hydrotalcite layer structure, which could be treated in the next slide. This pioneer work has been done by when I have been invited uh, from DRD to work with Professor Schwieger in Erlangen. We did a nice idea during that time. We did in situ XRD analysis. In situ XRD analysis, we synthesize the materials. 
put the material in the chamber, and this chamber is possible to move or to pass some water river. I will show it in the next slide, I guess, and then come back to this one. This is a chamber here, so we could add the material, and we can do something like the thermal decomposition and following up such kind of decomposition by XRV, elevating the temperature up to 1000 degrees centigrade if you wish, and following up what happened in the structure of the material. And again, we can pass some water vapor by flowing nitrogen, passing the water, go to the chamber, the material takes this water vapor, and following up the retain of the structure again, what happens, what changing is the structure. According to this schematic diagram that had been published earlier in the applied clay science, the top 10 uh, Q two journals, the most important thing is the, ad, the, the reviewer said you are adding new terminologies to the community. It was so because some of the definitions was misleading in the literature. So I tried here to say what's going on. This is an air material, cationic sheet and ionic. If we thermally treat the material in the temperature range set to 200, you just remove water vapor. So we'll keep the structure of the material by more another anions without physiological water. If you increase the temperature more in the temperature range up to 580 degrees centigrade, you are doing a collapsing of the structure completely. So we don't need, we don't have any layer of material anymore, we have only the collapsing metal oxide structure here. And this collapsing metal structure, after passing the water vapor for a long period of time, following up what's going on during the rebuilding the structure, uh, the material itself, it's like a sponge, rebuild its structure, but not exactly like the original one. Why? Because we are passing here only water vapor, so we have here another new phase, which is hydrocalcite like material, but it contains only hydroxyl groups, and more specifically, more terminal hydroxyl groups are there here. And this phase is called mesinerite phase. Accordingly, we start to define every step of this one. Here, <clears throat> if we return from this structure by hydration, it's called only rehydration of the structure. If we take the collapsed one, which is the mixed metal oxides, passing water vapor and carbon dioxide, or treating in a, an aqua solution of sodium carbonate, you are doing reconstruction, complete reconstruction of the material, intercalating of carbonate, hydroxyl groups, and everything. The tenant is original one. And if you do, if you'd like to return from the mixed and right phase, you need to have a complete carboxylation to form the layer material again. What's the idea behind this study? Why? This study, some people, or most of the people in the literature are saying it's a memory effect of the material. Memory effect means this material has a smart memory. They retain its structure again according to the treatment that you are doing for this material. But on the other side, some people say, you know, it's dissolving, then rebuilding and reforming, still the stories between them. What's most important for us is not this story, is how to make use of such kind of material as a general material for the production of catalysts, whatever the reaction required for. What's exactly, for example, if we need to synthesize metals, do we have to synthesize it by classical methods of the metal oxides or it stupid the structure and then by certain composition, chemical composition, and then we do some thermal treatment and you will have smart material. Let us look at the next slide here. This open I mentioned where the layer of oxide itself is present. It has an application by its basic sites in a certain organic reactions. This is after collapsing the structure, we have the mixed metal oxides, which is have an extra basic sites due to the presence of the lowest basic sites. Magnesium oxide is there. And the third one, after hydration of the materials, we have terminal OHs and extra protected basic sites. So find another application. But here, that's what I'm saying. The layer material itself has an application as a solid base catalyst for the carbon carbon coupling, as we'll see during this presentation. But the material, if we can sign the material, 
you will have a collapsed structure of different metal oxides. And if we substitute the magnesium and aluminum by different metal oxides, you could have a series of different metal oxides synthesized via hydroxide process. And the advantage of such kind of metal oxides related to the usual or classical preparation of the metal oxides is a large surface area, the porosity of the material, the dispersion, and this dispersion could be <coughs> could be shown after the reduction of metal oxide itself. So we can use a metal oxide retaining its instruction in the, in the layered structure itself to the metals that are linked well uh, established in the layer in the layer and have of course good dispersion and could find an application in different other reactions like uh, reforming the preferential CO, methanol ion and methanol synthesis. <coughs> and if we do rehydration or hydration of the material, you could find more terminal OHs. More specific, if you need more pairs for a certain reaction, it's better to use a hydrated form. More OHs for a reaction like in a reaction. The rehydrated form is much better than the hydrotal site itself. Again, the uh, uniform distribution of the cations find the applications and the electrophotocatalysis. Interpolation, you can interpolate by, by removing the anions that are present here, by any other anion. You could find, you could add polymer, you could add DNA, whatever the applications you would like to do. Here, and during this presentation, we did what's called assembling of the material by supporting the material itself over one to the material like the, the, the multiple carbon tubes or to the materials like the graphene oxide and find what's the effect of such kind of hybrids of improving the uh, problems that facing the layer uh, double hydroxide itself as a catalyst for the reaction. Uh, our group of research started, as I said, since first publications were 2010, after we started in 2007, but first publication of 2010 for the applied ray science, and we start to apply such kind of materials in different organic reactions, a collaboration between different groups. So we start with any sulfonylation reaction of amines, who succeeded to use zinc and William layer of the oxide itself in this ultrasonic radiations. As a micro addition, magnesium aluminum using bifunctional groups, because this reaction needs acidic and basic sites as well. And uh, on the reaction, on my coming, the first uh, clipper was by using copper, magnesium, aluminium, layer of hydroxide in microwave. And the problem that we are facing here, we are trying to solve it here by adding the graphene oxide, as I mentioned now. So, why uh, graphene oxide? as a support or using graphene oxide to the LDH. LDH itself, we have also the charging side by the cathodic sheets, and here in the graphene oxide, we have another object to charge it. So electrostatic attraction would happen, and we could succeed to synthesize layer by layer. Here, if you have graphene oxide, this means you have stacking of the layers. The layers are stacked together. To separate these layers from each other, you need to add another layer of material. It's possible because of the interaction between them. Second one, it's possible also to disperse the layer double hydroxide above the graphene oxide sheet itself. So, do we succeed to make such kind of senses and its application? The answer is yes. We synthesize post cover aluminum layer double hydroxide support graphene oxide by classical co precipitation method. But graphene oxide is there inside the solution, and we make co-precipitation using precipitating agent to the salt for both cobalt and carbon. Then the catalyst was dried and used. The characterization of the layer of hydroxide material supported on graphene oxide. You can present it by set images for them. We can see in both either cover or cobalt layer double hydroxide, both individuals. We have larger aggregates. And for LDH graphene oxide hybrid, similar, similar individuals also, the particle as observed for the pure LDH material itself. 
So there is no great difference between the particle in using only 3% of graphene oxide. But we can see the differences here between the cobalt aluminum layer double hydroxide and that support of graphene oxide by the separation of the hexagonal sheets a little bit from here. So some kind of separation means the star to succeed for the separation of the sheets from each other by the edge itself. Here the images could more explain the external layers in both copper and, and cobalt and here we could, we could see the high degree of dispersion of the layered materials above the surface of the graphene oxide itself. XRD again, we have only the XRD uh, diffraction patterns for the layered materials, but in 2 theta around 11, so we don't have any peaks for the graphene oxide. This means we have only uh, uh, peaks for the layered material. Both the unsupported or the uh, pure material and the hybrid one, they have almost the, the same, no change in the uh, particle size more, but we'll see here What's happened in comparison both cover layer of hydroxide pure and cobalt aluminum layer of hydroxide, we could find great difference in the surface area between these two materials. And this great difference could be correlated to the difference in the particle size calculated from Scherer equation of the XR machine, where we could find the doubling of the uh, crystal size causes a decrease in the surface area. In contrary to that, by adding graphene oxide, introducing graphene oxide led to increasing the surface area of the material itself. Graphene oxide itself could have no surface area, not like the graphene, but graphene oxide together with layer of hydroxide in case of copper and cobalt to have much larger surface area. This goes, this goes by the succeed of the separation of the stacking layers of the graphene oxide, as well as increasing the dispersion of the layer double hydroxide on the surface of the graphene oxide itself. Now we have a catalyst has basic properties during the place of OHs. We have another support which causes dispersion to avoid the possible aggregation the possible aggregation of the catalyst during the reaction. If you are using layer of hydroxide in the liquid phase reaction, of course we can separate the material, we can use it five times, more than five times, with little bit decay in the catalytic activity due to, due to the loss in the weight uh, by filtration due to some contaminations. But we are facing another problem. When you still work with hydrothal side, we're facing problem of the aggregation of such material. This aggregated, so it's coming phase, we face a problem when applying on the application of this material. But now, after separation of lead double hydroxide from each other, in a sheet, increasing the surface area and preventing its agglomeration during the reaction, as we'll see here in the catalytic activity, this could be a promising uh, application for such material. Here, we could find that copper and cobalt are much higher in their percent conversion selectivity yield than the hybrid one. Okay, and this means graphene oxide could decrease the catalytic uh, activity of the material. No, we have to wait for a long time catalyst performance after five regenerations of circuits. If you do regeneration and regeneration and regeneration, you could find some Resistance, yes, there is a decay on both the material itself and the supported one, but the supported one is still resisting the deactivation in comparison to the catalyst itself without supporting on the graphene oxide. And this again could explain to us the role of the graphene oxide on the dispersion as well as preventing the agglomeration of the layer the double hydroxide at least for a five cycles operation during the senses of the ordinary action. <clears throat> so we'll say, at what time, we need only 25 minutes. Using ultrasound microwave, no. We are using classical reaction. Only 25 minutes, classical reaction, 
91% indeed, 98% respectively for post cabinet cobalt. So, graphene oxide provides a lightweight charge complementary two dimensional materials that interacts effectively with the 2D and edge in turn, enhancing its stability as a catalyst for the ordinary reaction. Here, the proposed mechanism for the reaction, how, how it proceeds, we could find the, the nucleophilic species in the NDH framework itself, reacts with copper 2, converted to copper 3, and then this is an intermediate. Subsequently, the copper is exchanged for the cycle to form the bifenyl and retain its structure again. Is so it depends again on the oxidation of the material. So cobalt, divalent, trivalent, the same thing for the cover. And the most advantage here, they are retained in the structure of the material, not moving, are removing the material. For the depletion or leaching of such kind of materials, we followed the leaching process by filtration, testing cover in the filters, and the filtrates. Testing the others, infiltrates, we didn't find any 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 depletion for such kind of goods. They are not in a limited form. They are in the metal oxide form. If they are in metal form, probably they will have some kind of depletion, but if they are still in the metal oxide form, they are very strongly stacked to the structure itself. So I would come to the conclusion outlook of our work. So during the precipitation of possibly charged cover layer of double hydroxide onto negatively charged graphene oxide, the mutual electrostatic interactions drive the self-assembly of heterostructured nanohybrids in a layer-by-layer -layer fashion. Second one, the resultant layer double hydroxide serves as a spacer to prevent the aggregation of the graphene oxide, as well as in contrary to that the graphene oxide improving the NDH by dispersion. Both catalysts show it, uh, to be efficient, inexpensive, solid hydrogenous catalysts that can catalyze hormone coupling of aryl uh, to biaryls in the absence of a base, which is important, using practical reaction conditions for short time, 25 minutes in a high yield. And the mechanical products of the graphene oxide allows an enhancement of the stability of the catalysts that can be separated and reused after five cycles. And the class of supported reagents can facilitate both of the isolation and the recycling of the catalyst by filtrations of providing, of course, environmentally cleaner process. Probably this point is not specific to our catalyst, it's in general fusing the operation of support. Uh, so by the end of my talk, I would like to thank my colleagues that work with us first of all, our group of surface chemistry and catalysis, catalytic studies group by at KU who started together to build every uh, instrument one by one. This is one of our labs. Back to us, we have the absorption techniques, embed material in front of us, there are the reactor for the gas phase reactions. So I would like to thank Professor Suleiman Bessa, the head of the uh, group, and uh, my colleagues, Professor Shoel Thibeti, Dr. Tariq Taha, Dr. Narasim Harao. Of course, I have to return to my students who are working and they did the power of the work always are the students. Without students, you don't have any data to present. So my student, Toda Sherbini, which will present, I will invite you to uh, attend his lecture. Uh, probably it moved to Wednesday yes. for the Mithanol Olefin. And uh, my current student, Alia, as well, she's working now on Suzuki Reaction. We're doing our best. It's hard, hard, not yet having promising results by using Suzuki coupling. And the real Sharif, she got her master degree, worked for the ultrasound irradiation for zinc aluminum layer double hydroxide. Did she got her PhD degree from uh, KAUST. And of course, Dr. Nisreen Said, organic uh, chemistry, medicinal chemistry. She's my wife, and we start to help each other understanding more. I need, of course, people in the organic chemistry in order to start to understand exactly what's organic. We, as a catalyst people, were asking either the reaction needs acid-based, catalysis-based, catalysis, what's the mechanism before starting to say to find solutions? So such kind of collaboration makes the story short. And instead of taking long time of 
same thing alone, always two heads are better than one head. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Question concerning memory effect of yes. hydrotal cells. So, hydrotal cells, when you give high temperature treatment or high temperature calcination, they collapse yes. at the temperature of 500 degrees due to loss of carbon dioxide and water. Yes. The carbon dioxide due to decomposition of carbonates. But when you rehydrate again, yes. the structure is restored. Yes. But how do you get back your carbon dioxide? You can regain your steam. When you steam it, you introduce hydroxyl groups. But carbon dioxide, where does it come from? Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for your question. It's an important question. Here, the glass yes. structure, if you lost the past water vapor, and that has been done, I, I did present here the XRD for such because this is another story, another okay. paper. Uh, after 48 hours, we have the structure exactly in the layered structure like layer double hydroxide material. But it's not exactly layer double hydroxide. It's mixed in the right way. Yes. So I'm saying it's hydroxide like structure. Your okay. expression here, how can we make the return from the mix in the right step yes. to the hydroxide step? Right. Here, you need to make what's called carboxylation. If you do carboxylation to succeed to do complete carboxylation, this means you are returning back carbon dioxide yes. in the structure yes. and water vapor, so you have almost reconstruction or, or carboxylation of the material. Here, this is the difference between the, the literature. The literature, it was first, it was a presentation, I'm talking this presentation in front of Professor Vega. So I used many terms, sometimes rehydration, sometimes hydration, sometimes crystallization. So when would say every step exactly hydration or rehydration or infrastructure. So by this paper we said okay here we say only dehydration for the collapsed structure reconstruction to take space this is already done. If you just dissolve the metal oxide in aqueous sodium hydroxide uh, or sodium carbonate sodium hydroxide you will keep the structure again exactly probably more crystalline more bigger uh, in crystal than the original. Thank you. Thank you. One more, can I ask? Yes. Yes? Short one, 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 short one. Yes, one. Yeah, very short one. So when you introduce graphene oxide, 3%, yes. Yes. the performance was somewhat inferior to the in absence of graphene oxide. Mm. Some adverse effect. But after five regenerations, yeah. it is improved and stabilized. Yes. So, what do you think? The graphene oxide is lost during your five regeneration cycles, or you still have the same amount it's in the fresh and the spangled? Yeah, graphene oxide is lost, this means uh, that the, the connectivity should decrease because the layer of the oxide will come again. The problem that facing this material is they don't intercalation. So, the question is after five times using in the liquid phase, why not intercalate it by another organic material? I already did some XRD for this one. After the reaction, I found some organic materials here. Because it's interpolated again in the layers. Instead of using carbonates, you have another alliance coming from the reaction. So, uh, and the problem is they come close to each other, aggregates together. So, how to separate the LDH increase the surface area by increasing on a layer by layer, layer by layer? This is, could be the reason for the stability of such a material. You still have layer that have oxide away from each other. Layer of oxide itself is very active because graphene is not active for such a reaction. But once you have graphene, this means you will succeed to make the separation and giving larger spacer to prevent agglomeration for a longer time. And this is why the pitlay activity was still better than the stability process. Thank you. Uh, thank you. First of all, I want to thank you very much for this informative, exciting lecture. I got enjoyed myself. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, um, you attracted my mind actually by saying that why we have to prepare metal oxide by traditional way. Yes. So my interest is in the last chart that my colleague asked mm -hmm. about, 
Is it possible to prepare a metal oxide by a certain way to be a, like a memory chip material? It will be a benefit and will have uh, many applications actually in biological application and industry. So it's possible yes. or not? It and is what possible. is the main characterization or prerequisite for this metal oxide to be prepared? Is it possible to apply for any metal or what? I thank you one more. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, impressive question regarding this one. Uh, first of all, the issue is if you are carefully substitute the divalent cation, isomorphic substitution means the magnesium is of the hydrogen side. If you succeed to add copper, for example, in the octahedral side exactly, and instead of using two magnesium, okay, just about titanium. Could yeah, you speak about yeah, platinum? Yeah, platinum. Because I'm working it. Yeah, platinum is platinum is another story. Platinum you can. Titanium. Yeah, platinum. Titanium. 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 Titanium.